Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby, and welcome to my strange little YouTube channel. Now, I've been watching a lot of the show Cold Case lately, and if you've never watched that show, you need to. It's so good. It's one of my favorite shows of all time, but I never watched it in order, so I've been binge watching it lately, and it kind of got me thinking, like, I wonder how many cold cases have been solved in this past year? How many cold cases were solved in 2017? So I looked into it, and I found some really interesting ones, and I picked three of my favorites to share with you in today's video. I'm excited to share these with you, but I'm also excited for today's video because it is actually a collab with one of my favorite YouTubers ever, Kyla Rebecca. Now, I absolutely adore this girl. Like, her channel is so amazing. She deserves so many more subscribers than she has. Her content is just awesome. Like, it is so hard, in my opinion, to find YouTubers that are just 100% genuine, and that is Kyla. Like, that's her. Every one of her videos, you can just tell she is being so real. She is one of the sweetest people. And if you don't know this, Kyla is actually the reason that I started my channel in the first place. Late of 2015, I was really considering starting my own channel because there were so many different stories and topics I wanted to talk about that were not really talked about on YouTube. And I really wanted to share my personal paranormal stories. And I watched a few of Kyla's and she just seemed so relatable. I reached out to her on Instagram and I told her how I wanted to start my own channel and she told me to go for it and I started my channel. I uploaded my first video and Kyla was my third subscriber and it just means a lot to me that I am collabing with her today. I will be linking her video down below in the description. Go check it out. Go subscribe to her. You will not regret it. But with that being said, let's just get into it. In June of 1980, a 14-year-old girl in Antioch, California named Suzanne Bombardier was babysitting at her sister's home when she disappeared in the middle of the night. About a week later, her body was found in San Joaquin Valley near the Antioch Bridge. She was sexually assaulted, but her cause of death was a fatal stab wound to the heart. Many suspects were investigated through the years, but police either eliminated them as a suspect or couldn't find enough evidence to completely tie them to the case. One of the original suspects was a man named Mitchell Lynn Bacon. Most of the police working on the case believed he committed the crime, but not enough evidence could be gathered. Biological material found at the crime scene that linked Bacon's DNA to the crime was sitting in a evidence locker for all these years. They sent the material to San Mateo County Sheriff's Office Forensic Laboratory, and with the advances in DNA testing, they were able to 100% match Bacon's DNA to the DNA found at the crime scene. The reason police first started suspecting Mitchell as the murderer of Suzanne Bombardier was because through the years he had some sort of an obsession with the women in Suzanne's family. First he tried to date her mother and then he tried to date her sister. Through the years he had developed a lengthy criminal record. He was arrested in 1973 for rape, robbery, and assault. In 1981, he was arrested again for robbery and rape, being sentenced to 24 years in prison. In 2002, he was sentenced to four years in prison for not properly registering as a sex offender. He was finally arrested this year for the murder of Suzanne Bombardier at the age of 63. The notorious Bay Area cold case has just been solved. Police say they've arrested a man who kidnapped, raped, and murdered a 14-year-old girl in Antioch 37 years ago. After decades with few leads, investigators reopened the case in 2015 using DNA evidence. Thanks to advances in forensic science, obtaining this positive identification for Suzanne's killer became a reality. This arrest closes the oldest open unsolved murder with the Antioch Police Department. Detective Gregory Glaud, who was originally assigned to the case, told newspapers, My prayers have been answered. Probably not too many days have gone by that I haven't thought about this case. This has made my life complete, to be quite honest with you. It is also suspected that he may be responsible for a few other murders in the area around that time, but for now, at least one family has closure after 37 years. In the year 1993 in Bronx, New York, a drug dealer named Michael Stewart, age 33, told his girlfriend, Sophia Blair, 22, to leave the country with him. 
He was wanted for narcotics and he wanted to skip town immediately. On September 20th, 1993 at 2323 Creston Avenue, after Sophia refused to leave with him, he shot her and killed her, the mother of his child. After he murdered Sophia, he phoned her father and told him, your daughter is in the house alone with the baby in the crib. His son was in the house for over 10 hours with his mother laying on the floor dead before anyone came. Michael fled the country to Jamaica, and in 2014, when he felt the case was completely cold, he returned and moved to Hartford, Connecticut. When police found out he returned, they looked back into the case. Within no time of returning to the United States, he was arrested for identity theft charges, and while in custody, police decided to question him about the murder of Sophia Blair. Michael swore that he had not killed her and that she must have been killed because of her involvement with drugs and that possibly somebody shady had her murdered. In December of 2016, he was faced with murder charges, and in October of this year, he was convicted of second degree murder. An Oregon family finally gets closure after almost four decades. On March 9th, 1979, 18-year-old Janie Landers disappeared from the Fairview Training Center for the Developmentally Challenged. Janie Landers was mentally challenged, and at 18 years old, she only functioned at the level of an eight-year-old. Five days after she disappeared, her lifeless body was found in a field with defensive wounds all over her body and a very deep stab wound in her neck. Her cause of death, though, was a blunt force trauma to her head. Detectives could not really pinpoint any main suspect in this case, but in 2001, they decided to take another look into it. They again couldn't really find out much, but in 2015, Janie's sister, Joyce Hooper, begged police to open the case again. Detective Steve Hinkle said, It's a vulnerable young girl that got murdered for no reason and somebody did it. Somebody needed to be held accountable. After re-examining her wound, they realized there was no abrasion marks to indicate the knife was one with a handle, so he might have cut himself also, so they looked for somebody else's blood on her body as well. They in fact found another person's blood on her body. They ran the DNA through their database and they found a match. The DNA matched a man named Gerald Dunlap, whose DNA was in the system from his 1996 conviction on first-degree sex abuse charges of a family member. In 1961, he was given a 99-year prison sentence for rape charges, but was paroled in 1973, six years before killing Janie. So, kind of in summary, the evidence I think pretty clearly points and supports that on March 9, 1979, Gerald Kenneth Dunlap murdered Janie Landers and subsequently dumped her body on Highway 214 near a milepost 23.1. Gerald Dunlap died behind bars in 2002. Janie's family says that they are upset that he never went to prison for the murder of Janie, but they are forever grateful for Detective Hinkle for never giving up on the case. Joyce Hooper says, Final closure would have been seeing him convicted of her murder, but how I try to look at it is he died in prison. He wasn't out there hurting anyone else. And the problem really is that DNA degrades, you know, and, it, and it, there's a ticking clock on DNA evidence and it all, there's so many factors that play into the degradation from the time elapsed to the way it's stored to humidity, I mean, all those things. And um, you never know, you could have a case that's 15 years old that was stored improperly packaged improperly where the DNA is, is gone and, and, and you could have one of this age uh, where we got lucky and we did some things right back when we when, when, when we packaged it and we stored it and, and we got lucky. So. so I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. I will leave all sources down below for where I got my information if you guys want to learn more about the cases mentioned in today's video and like I said today's video was a collab with Kyla so go check her video out. You will not regret it. And I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and are having a happy holiday. And I love you guys so much. And we'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.